So you've probably never heard of Soul Ash 2. It's a small indie game made by one guy that's all about living life in a fantasy RPG world the way you want to live it. Recently some drama happened around it, and I was able to chat to the developer to ask some questions. First, let me get you up to speed with the details of what is going on. So Soul Ash 2 got an update fairly recently where they added marriage and heritage. You can play as however you want to play as whoever you want to play and so you can now get married in the game get children so when your character does end up dying you are able to play as one of your children a certain user on steam however asked a very simple question and a dev responded with a very simple answer so let's look into it as a dev here says this is my response a week ago after that response, a week-long activism campaign engulfed all our community channels. So I showed my teeth, the oppressive people left, and now we can continue to have fun in peace. Now what was the original post? Hey Arthur, thank you for your hard work. I'm a queer fan of your game and wanted to ask if same-sex relationships would be possible in future updates. I know other devs like the ones who made Medieval Dynasty said they considered it too late to put it into the game, so I just wanted to see if it was something on your radar or if it would be safe for you to implement in the future. Thank you for your time and dedication to this game and this community. A very respectful, positive, easy simple question and a response here goes the main purpose of the family system is to create a legacy through children and given our limited ways to interact with npcs i don't think there's a good way to represent relationships so i don't plan to expand that right now more extended interactions were something that some players wished was a bigger focus of the game, but unfortunately it would take a long time and probably the removal of the conversations and dialogue systems to turn Soul Ash 2 into The Sims, as well as the other games I'm already trying to mix. We're gonna have to see if I ever get excited about it, but right now I'm too pumped to go to war to delay it any further and then a winky face so it is a bit of a, a little bit of a hype he's trying to create and out its next update is a very respectful response honestly i can't really be too mad i don't think anyone's mad i don't think uh the first person who actually made this post is also mad this is the interaction that happened and got people mad apparently there was a response to the uh, tweet I just showed you, which is, for context, he hard-coded the game to not allow same-sex relationships, so mothers can add it to the game. This is something that already sounds really weird to me for a small indie dev, a one-person dev team, to do this, specifically so much hate for the gay community. So let's look into his response again to this allegation. I've heard people falsely claim I intentionally hard-coded a way not to have gay marriage in mods. I want to clarify that Soul Ash 2 is on a custom engine and modding is only configuration based. This means there's no way to develop new mechanics or change the simulation through mods, but we have friendly in-game editors that can help add custom content for players who don't code. So as you can tell here, the developer does not have the uh, exact requirements to make mods. I heard him also talk about trying to add them in another tweet, but wasn't able to multiple times throughout the years. He tried this. And of course, as we know, Twitter is the perfect place for a bit of discourse. So lots of people showed lots of hate. Uh, they didn't care. There was one guy who said he didn't even care about the context of what was sent. He just hated the guy now because maybe he was like a homophobe or something. It's a very, very weird situation to be in. And it's something that even a small no that is very friendly can be seen as aggressive in some way. It's definitely a sort of ag agenda that needs to be pushed. Another way they try to actually get this game to do bad is by review bombing. Funnily enough, the game went from, I think, 83% to 80%, so barely did anything, honestly. But let's look at one of the reviews to see how, you know, why this person does not advise you to play Soul Ash 2. The developer is an evil person and also an idiot. Other people have talked about why he is an evil person, so I will explain why he is an idiot. He's an idiot because despite being a full-grown adult, he doesn't understand basic natural consequences. If you are openly bigoted, the people who hate bigots will use the tools at their disposal to punish you. 
even if the idiot manages to salvage his Steam rating, he has made himself toxic to associate with for several of the key YouTubes who provide publicity for roguelike games and is therefore unlikely to receive further coverage from them. Anyone with basic business sense would know not to say the heinous things he has, so clearly he has none. An individual without basic business sense is likely to make unsound decisions in the future, which means he is much less likely to succeed in developing the game enough for it to be worth the price he charges. So even if you are an amoral, a selfish egotist, or worse, a bigot, the poor decision may demonstrated by his awful behavior is a good reason to not buy the game. This is probably one of the worst reviews I have read in a long time because none of this makes any sense. The, the like I've shown you the tweet. This is the only thing that happened like discourse wise. He made a few responses to people where he was just like, what are you doing? Why are you saying these things? Nothing too crazy, but you know, he responded. He, he he put his foot down and he said, I'm not taking this, okay? He'll talk about it later in some of the questions I uh, asked. It's very clear that just a small group of people are trying to boycott this like one indie dev for making his game. And I don't think any of them are checking the facts because as they've stated they do not care about context they'd rather believe that this is an evil man that hates them and that wants to turn the world anti-gay or something i don't know they have this weird agenda in their head and they don't even represent the lgbtq community probably most of them probably do not care at all but now the question begs to be asked what is he thinking about right what is it that he wants to tell us so i went ahead i asked him a few questions and let's go check what he answered. So my first question I asked was, did this affect your motivation to work on the game? To which he answered, it's difficult to unwind after all of this. But in the long term, no, I can't wait to return to work. The best futures are ahead. Reason to be hyped, honestly. Then question two I asked was, do you feel like you'd be more reluctant to push updates as to not get attacked or refuse bombed in the future? He answered to this, no, this is the best possible outcome for me and my community. I wanted to push out the extremists bothering my player base, and now we can focus on making a great game. I'm looking forward to just getting back to normal activity on Discord, as it should be for a game discord let's be honest here i don't care your political opinions right now a game discord should be about the game question three i asked was just as a confirmation for people so this is for anyone who didn't believe it yet you don't have anything against the lgbtq community right he answered to this i do not the moment this hit my discord at 2 a.m my time i prioritized explaining my position over everything else since discord was the main part of our game community i wanted to protect from the start i'm against the extremists claiming to represent lgbtq in their heinous acts and trying to push their political ideology which is what they tried to do for over a week and i am completely honest here i couldn't have said it better myself these are a few individuals that do not care they're uh white knighting i guess i don't know the exact term anymore but there is a term for trying to like help someone that doesn't need help they aren't helping any community with this people will not care they are not doing god's work by punishing one guy for making a game that doesn't have same-sex marriage. That is not how this works. That's not how the real world works. But I did ask him one more question, and that is, is there anything you'd really like to say to the public? He gave me a short and sweet response, and that was, live and let live. And honestly, with that, I can tell just from the small interaction I've had, the fact that I am as unknown as can be, this man is completely chill, normal, and just wants to be done with all the trouble. So let's leave this at that. I'm glad to see that the developer here didn't really get too much to him. He probably got bothered, like he said, for a week, and it's been annoying, and it's been difficult to unwind like he said he's a bit worked up probably and that is all fully understandable because it doesn't matter what it's about if you all of a sudden get harassed or attacked for these things it's just not fun i'm very very hyped to see what is in store for the game as he's been trying to tease a bit and he's saying that his best updates are yet to come i'd like to just say that i actually did buy soul ash 2 before any of this happened i bought it in july it is a wonderful game you should buy it it's 
18 euros, pretty damn cheap, and it's worth its price. With that, I leave you with your own opinion formed, but I don't have it here yet. So why not leave it down in the comments below so we can have a bit of a discussion. We can talk a bit more about what you think about this whole interaction between this developer and a group of people that tried to boycott him. And if you like this video, I have a feeling that a recent video I made about Dustborn and their devs getting up to some shady stuff is going to be right up your alley. So why not click on it and I'll see you there.